Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's apply it to something like this. We're given a function, actually, the function, if we want to write it, would look like this. f of x is equal to x to the fifth plus 6x minus 1. And what they're saying here is that it only has one root between x equals negative 1 to x equals 1, which means it only crosses the x-axis once over that interval. And we're supposed to show that that's indeed the case. So what we can do here is as follows. We can find the slope between the straight line connecting those two points on the graph. Let's begin with that. So we're going to evaluate the function f when x is equal to uh, negative 1. And then we're going to evaluate the function when x is equal to 1. And so let's see what we get when we do that. So here we get negative 1 to the fifth power plus 6 times negative 1 minus 1. So that would be minus 1 minus 6, that's minus 7, minus 1, which is minus 8. Do the same for this. We get 1 to the fifth power plus 6 times 1 minus 1. That's equal to uh, 1 plus 6 is 7, minus 1 is 6. So those are the corresponding y values when x is negative 1 and when x is 1. So the two points on the curve will be negative 1, negative 8, and 1, 6. Okay, let's grab that and see what, what those two points are. Okay, there's our y-axis. There's our x-axis. The first point is negative 1, negative 8. So when x is negative 1, y is negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 8. So that's this point right there. And when x equals 1, y is equal to 6. So when x is a positive 1, y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This point right there. All right, so when we draw a straight line, like so, that is the line between the two points, the two endpoints of the interval. Now, what does the function look like? Well, potentially, the function can do this, right, before it gets back up there. So we could have something like this, like this, like this, and that would be two or three or, well, in this case, there either would be one root, there would be three roots, or there would be five roots or something like that. So let's find out what the real story is here. The next thing we're going to do is see if we can find points between negative 1 and 1 that will give you the same slope if we take the derivative. That's, after all, the mean value theorem. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to find the slope of that straight line. So the slope is equal to the rise divided by the run, which means the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values, which is equal to, um, let's see here, the second point would be 6 minus a minus 8 divided by this point right here. That would be 1 minus a minus 1. That would be 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So the slope of that straight line is 7. Let's see if there are points along our curve that will give you the same slope. So f prime of x is equal to 5x plus 6. We're going to set that equal to 7. So set f prime of x equal to 7. So 5x plus 6 equals 7. 5x is equal to 7 minus 6, that would be 1, and so x would be equal to 1 fifth, and I'm missing something, am I not? I'm missing the uh, 5x to the fourth power, so when I took the derivative, I forgot my new exponent here, right? So it's 5x to the fourth power, and so this is 5x to the fourth, 5x to the fourth, x to the fourth, and so x will be equal to the fourth root, plus or minus, of course, because it could be a plus or minus, since it's an even number of roots, of one-fifth. So this tells me that there are two values for x where the slope of the derivative, or the derivative, because the slope of the derivative is kind of a, uh, say the same thing twice, when I take the derivative, I get the same slope as the line right there. And so that happens that x equals plus the, square, the fourth root of one-fifth, or when x equals minus the fourth root of one-fifth. So there's two places where the slope is equal to the slope, the slope of the function, or the derivative is equal to the slope of that straight line. Wow, if there's two points, that means that maybe there's a point right here, there's a point right there, so maybe the line goes up here, comes back down, and then comes back up there. So there's a potential for three roots because of that. 
Now we're going to do one more thing. We're going to take the derivative and set it equal to zero to see if there's any local max or mins between that interval. So we're going to set f prime of x equal to zero, which means that 5x to the fourth plus 6 equals zero, and now we're going to solve for that. So we move the 6 across, so we get uh, x, uh, 5x to the fourth is equal to minus 6, x to the fourth is equal to minus 6 over 5, and here we have a problem. We cannot find the solution there because the, we can take the fourth root of both sides, but in other words, x is equal to plus or minus the square root or the fourth root of minus 6 over 5, and that's a problem. That's, there's no real solution to that, so therefore we can say there's no solution. And if there's no solution, that means there's no place on the function between x equals negative 1 and x equals 1 where there's either a maximum or a minimum value. So if we have two points where the slope of the function matches the slope of the straight line, but nowhere is there maximum or minimum value, we cannot have a function that looks like this. And so therefore there cannot be multiple roots. That means the only other possibility is that the function must look something like this and like that. Whoop, I should be going to the point. There's the point. I'll make it a little bit bigger. So that there is two places, one there and one there, where the slope is the same as the slope of the line. But since there's no maximum min values anywhere along that, there can only be one place where it crosses the x-axis. So therefore, there can only be one root on that interval. And we've just shown that that's indeed the case. And that's how we do that.